So as we gather here uh, at the start of a remembrance of creation, uh, brother-in-law Ken LeVay will do a song for us as we start. We're going to smudge that in the drum and offer a blessing for our time together. This is part of our tradition, a tradition that was uh, ostracized and condemned and yet uh, something that we bring as part of our faith tradition as indigenous people. So it's going to offer that. Thank you today once again to be able to speak to you all the word of the Lord. Good Shepherd, I am the Good Shepherd, the one who watches over the sheep. I will lay down my life for them. The ones who watch the sheep will pay only, will only run away, and then a wolf comes because the sheep is not theirs. Then the wolf preys on the sheep and scatters the flock. The ones who do it only will pay for pay are not true shepherds, for they do not care for the sheep, but only for themselves. I am the good shepherd, the one who lays down his life for the sheep. Creator knows me, and I know Creator. In the same way, I also know each one of my sheep, and they know me. I have other sheep who are not from this flock. I will go and find them, and they will also hear my voice. And there will be only one flock with one shepherd. The Creator has a great love for me, for I lay down my life down to take it back again. No one takes my life from me, for I lay it down on my own. I have the right to lay my life down and the right to take it back. It is Creator who gives me this right. Ishnish. Ishnish, uh, Gloria. Gloria is uh, completing her Master of Divinity at the Vancouver School of Theology as one of our student ministers for the uh, region. We're very happy to offer some time to her. I believe she'll be back on uh, May 5th to offer some words for the uh, Red Dress Day. And so here today, as we begin this journey on the cusp of Mother Earth Day, we gather our wisdom 
from the remnants of ancestral teachings, we see a world off kilter, struggling to maintain its balance as we, as humans, inflict harm year after year of exploitation and accrual, safeguarding our future at the expense of all else. Next week, faith communities will gather as part of the For the Love of Creation, a national campaign led by faith communities and denominations across the country, asking the question, what role do faith communities have in the climate emergency? What role of advocacy, of moral high ground, is our purview as we seek to influence governments and administrations to act in the interest of all, and not just the treasured few? This is part of that work, part of our work of reconciliation, part of our work of reconciling with the earth, and our relationship with the earth, understanding that what we do to one another redounds in our actions for the broader world at large. And in our scripture, we hear about the Good Shepherd. This is part of the uh, Jesus' famous I Am sayings from the Gospel of John. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the Good Shepherd. A Good Shepherd that cares for the flock, gives one light, one's life for that calling. One who set a good example, and yet is not about optics. It is about a deep and abiding caring that emerges out of a sense of responsibility and leadership. Who else will care for the flock? Who is called when all hope is lost? In our times, we have seen great tribulation in species-defining moments emerging from our global impact and world reach. These are the accelerants to a changing world. More voices, more issues, more debates, more challenges. And some might say, more confusion. As we listen to the escalating world war in the Middle East, to the attempts by all actors to stave off annihilation, we can wonder, what does a good shepherd do? What can they do? As we look closer to home, as intolerance rises, and a new status quo is leading us back to, into our corners to avoid conflict, and maybe wait out the turmoil until another day emerges, we continue to see leaders, the good shepherds, taking time to challenge what we know and believe, to get us out of our thinking just about ourselves, and just for ourselves. It's a time of remembering our responsibility to one another. In indigenous thinking and in indigenous theology, we hear about interconnection. It is the variety and diversity that is engaged at the moment of that inter interconnection that defines who we are in this world. Only there does it come full circle. Our responsibilities to the land and the water that help nourish our bodies, help to feed us, help to keep us alive. We have a delicate balance between ourselves and the world around us. The Lakota lawyer and theologian in the Episcopal Church in the United States wrote in his book, We Talk, We Listen, that Western linear expressions are often confounded when it intersects with indigenous ways of knowing and the interconnected way of thinking that many teachings of our elders express. He envisioned a circle, mapping the boundaries of indigenous existence, and the Western programmatic line encountering indigenous worldviews on that circle as a first encounter, which is something we are only skimming the surface of until we delve deeper and begin to understand what these movements and interconnections mean. My father writes, wrote in his book, These Mountains Are Our Sacred Places. Our religion, the religion of this great island, is not contradictory to the teachings of the great rabbis of the Hebrews, nor is it in conflict with the great Christian teachers. Didn't Jesus say to the Pharisees, other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, 
and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Didn't he say, in my father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you? Our religion professes faith in one creator and acknowledges unity and harmony of the creation, the harmony of the whole world, land, animals, birds, plant life, and men. Here we are not merely looking for an inclusive step towards an indigenous way, but a fundamental shift to an indigenous perspective that encounters and knows God and whom is engaged with the Christianity of our encounters. My father says, we were taught that when people died, they went to heaven and walked streets paved with gold, or to hell and forever roasted in a lake of fire. We were taught that only by believing in a righteous man named Jesus, who lived 2,000 years ago, could we be saved from fire. No one in the mission seemed to have the thought of the intelligent approach of saying, the great spirit, the creator whom you worship, has revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. We were taught that Christianity was the only true religion and that all others, including the faith of our fathers, were false and of the devil. So instead of common condemnation, what if we listened and learned? What if we understood, as our scripture says, that there are many ways to know God, many experiences, and many encounters. That the way of a good shepherd is founded in belief and teachings grounded in the same source of creation of all things, which is God. That, they may be, that the many beliefs that were suited to the people emerged in their ways of knowing and knowledges. My father said, for thousands of years, the Stony people gained an education from the tribal leaders, which fitted them to live with pride and confidence in this great island. They learned the ways of the seasons, the ways of the animals and birds. Which they learned which plants and herbs would sustain good health. They learned the ways of living together, respect for the needs of others, and sharing of the bounty of the hunt and the meaning of prayer. They learned to survive in all seasons, they learned the importance of bravery and wisdom. They learned the responsibility of leadership. They did not build schools, as a white man does, but the stony educational system was suited to the requirements of a free and independent people living in a free land. The way in this land that we understand relationship with God is living in creation and understanding our place and responsibility to be a good steward to be a good shepherd. My father concludes, the, only stony, the old stony medicine man had said, you must continue to go to the sacred mountains. You must fast and pray for many days and nights, and perchance you will see a vision upon the mountains. Before he went to the beautiful land of the spirits beyond the sunset, the old man with a century of experience spoke these words. You must search and search, and you will find ancient truths and wisdom that shall guide you in the future. And so you may come to this church in search of salvation for words and teachings of a savior resurrected in Christ. You may come to this church for a place of healing and nurture for the soul. You may come to the search to this church for right answers and right thinking to guide your tomorrows. Or you may come here in search of ancient truths a place in the circle where wisdom abounds. However you seek, whatever you seek, it is sought for in this place of community, bound by common fates and creation, bound by love and belonging and the hard-fought wisdom that brought us to today. We do not create epiphanies out of our own ingenuity, our own singularity. Epiphanies are the product of lessons and a way of life, tried and tested. They are a result of a life lived, of failures encountered and compromises made. They are a result of holding a beautiful thought what our lives could be if we all lived in right relationship. 
the blessing of creation that has given us a chance, or however fleeting, in this lifetime. And so we give thanks for that. In Jesus' name, amen.